in the more general case, so like the topical on the screen, on the skin or something like that. So how, how often would you need to do this treat this therapy? Because it, I mean, you're resetting the age of the cell, which one would assume would then last for a while. I mean, is it something you're going to have to do often or one to, once every few years or how often? Well, we, we don't have we don't have yet a definitive answer to that question. It's going to depend on the on the cell type. It is, it's it's going to depend on the tissue first of all. <clears throat> it's going to depend on the feature, the aging features of of that tissue, and it's also going <clears> to <throat> depend a lot on the on the targeting uh, efficiency that we're going to get. So, just to go back to what we said before about the stem cells, if we're able to target the stem cells and make them younger, the stem cells have the long-term capacity of regenerating the tissue. So that means that if we can target specifically the stem cells, we have a very, very long um, uh, duration potentially, just what, with, one, with one single treatment mm -hmm. of the effect of that, of that treatment. Uh, if we cannot target the stem cells and we target only the somatic cells, uh, then depending on how long the somatic cells survive in that tissue, you may have uh, different uh, uh, timing outcomes. Uh, in the case of the brain, and right now I'm just speculating again, <laughs> just because I don't have the, I don't have data in my hands. In the case of the brain, since a neuron theoretically is there for for lifetime, if you can rejuvenate the neurons by let's say 20, 30, 40 years, I don't know, you probably gain 20, 30, 40 years in terms of of function of that of of, of that neuron. So again, it, it depends on the cell type, it depends on the tissue, it depends on the disease. Uh, but there is there is potentially, you know, a very a very long uh, or, or there is a chance for for a, for a long lasting effect. How deterministic is the point of no return? And if you deliver like the therapy two or three times, I mean, there's a probability that one cell will get hit three times and one cell, some cells won't get hit at all, right? And so is there a danger that one or two cells would go, would be, would go beyond the point of no return? There is, there is a chance. Yes, there right. is a chance. And that's why we absolutely need to conduct very rigorous uh, safety studies uh, and develop the appropriate models to study this important question. Um, for example, we have never done experiments as of yet of repeating the era treatment over right. uh, or pulsing the era, the era treatment over the course of uh, several weeks or several months. We have only done uh, a specific intervention of uh, a certain number of days, which changes depending on the cell type, but we have done it only once uh, for, for two, three or four days. We are now doing studies in that in that in that regard. So we are trying to pulse the era treatment. So those two, three, or four days, uh, multiple times over the course of weeks, to see uh, you know what what you if if what you were saying is is true. Uh, my hunch again is that by really understanding, by really knowing the the biology <clears throat> and the physiology of the the cell type you are dealing with in depth. Uh, we can actually figure out even different um, windows of intervention or, or different modalities of intervention over the course of time. So again, just thinking loud here, it could be that maybe the first time you have to treat it, you have to treat the tissue for five days, and then maybe the second time just for a couple of days. Why? Because the cells now are rejuvenated in the way, maybe they're more prone to the point of no return, but at that point, the effect that you can get with a much shorter treatment is much is much more effective. So there is a lot there is a lot of potential interventions, but the bottom line is that we really need to rigorously understand the specific cell type, the specific physiology, the, the specific pathology, and then uh, base base our base our findings on base our decisions on on on, on data. This video is brought to you by Bioptimizers. Magnesium is a crucial mineral for hundreds of reactions in the body and impacts everything, including sleep and muscle and bone health. It is difficult to get sufficient magnesium through our food. In our efforts to remain fit and healthy, my wife and I frequently exercise, after which it's important to recover well and get restful sleep. To help us with this, we chose Magnesium Breakthrough from Bioptimizer 
because it blends all seven essential forms of magnesium into one effective supplement while also using all natural ingredients and being gluten, soy, and lactose free. It has improved our recovery and sleep quality since we've been taking it. And we are happy to tell you that Bioptimizers are offering a 10% discount for Magnesium Breakthrough to Modern Health Span audience. Just go to www.magnesiumbreakthrough.com slash modern or click on the link in the description to get a 10% discount with coupon code MODERN10. Thank you for your support. Reprogramming sounds pretty wonderful. I mean, being able to make the tissue younger again. So is there anything that it doesn't cover? I mean, if I can rejuvenate my my tissues, my liver or whatever. So will there still be pieces of me that are going to be getting old? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's an interesting question. So, um, well, the rejuvenation process doesn't mean that now the cells are no longer capable of aging, actually. So you're just bringing the cells back in time but the aging process, in a way, then is gonna is gonna is gonna tick the clock is gonna start ticking again after that rejuvenation process, right? So I think that's that's inevitable. That's really part of our of our biology and our our physiology. Um, there is there is a lot of other things, of course, that need to take it to to be taken into consideration. So, for example, uh, we are still not entirely sure, and probably wouldn't be a, a good idea, for example, to reprogram senescent cells or fully senescent cells because those cells are senescent for 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 a good reason because they they carry major genetic defects chromosomal aberrations translocations mutations and so on so it would probably be a, a bad idea at least that's the way we think about it it would probably be a good idea a bad idea sorry to reprogram those cells and bring them back in time because they you you potentially would engage them again in some processes of development that would lead to unwanted outcomes. Um, so in that case, for example, one potential solution would be to, to for example, to, to first clear the senescent cells, so kill them somehow in a, in a specific fashion. And this is where, for example, the senolytics uh, are, are, are going to be very helpful. Uh, and then once you have cleared them, uh, then you can reprogram and regenerate the the the, the remaining uh, the the existing the the resilient uh, cell types in the in the tissue. Um, so that's that's one way of of thinking about it. About it. Uh, the other thing that we have shown, for example, not being changed by 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 era is any genetic feature or any genetic mutation that has been accumulated by by the cells. Um, of course, you know if a genetic mutation has has happened, has occurred, there is nothing ERA can do in that in that regard. Mm -hmm. um, telomere attrition, for example, the shortening of the telomere is something that also ERA is not capable of uh, of, of reversing, unless uh, it's it's a stem cell. Why? Because somatic cells are not capable. Somatic fully differentiated cells are not capable of elongating the telomeres. They are cap they become capable of elongating the telomeres once they become stem cells, once they go beyond the point of no return. And as we as we as we said, we do not want to go beyond the point of no return. So a quintessential feature of fully differentiated somatic cells is not being able to elongate the telomeres, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's what something that ERA doesn't do, just because of the this just because of the fact, you know, of uh, of how era works <clears throat> does so what about mitochondria does making the cell younger also help the mitochondria yes yes absolutely we have uh, we have studied this in in a couple of different ways so we have looked for example at the the amount of energy that the mitochondria generate with or without era and we have seen that era leads the cells to um, having more functional mitochondria that are capable of generating more, more energy for the cells. Mitochondria generate energy also at the expenses of production of the so-called reactive oxygen species. So these are uh, oxidative uh, molecules that are detrimental to the cells. We have shown that 
not only era can lead them to generate more energy, but they generate more energy generating less oxidative stress in the cells. So both of the things are actually very, um, very good for the cells and are uh, triggered by, by era. Mm -hmm.